Hey everyone, so today we got some news, some brand new news on Tears of the Kingdom releasing on May 12th next year. Now, before we dive in, I'm going to note this isn't some groundbreaking discovery. We're not about to go into a bunch of spoilers on the story or some massive gameplay mechanic, but this is a new piece of news that was officially posted by Nintendo that really could have a lot of significance behind it. And I want to discuss that and then other reasons that this is really a big deal. Maybe not this news, but the game itself. And you might go, well, of course the game's a big deal, but I want to dive a little bit into this. So first, let's get to the news. And for, this comes from Nintendo's Latin America accounts. They actually, I discovered this on Twitter. They tweeted out a Facebook video they posted, which is essentially a happy holidays video, right? They're just wishing everyone happy holidays, and they're advertising all the games that came out this year, including some of this, the all-time most popular games like Mario Kart and stuff on Switch. But they have a little nugget in there about next year and in terms of Tears of the Kingdom. And that nugget is that official Spanish dubs are now underway for Tears of the Kingdom. Now, what does this mean? Well, dubs are actually the final step a game goes through that has voice acting in it before it's done. Dubs is literally it. Like you have your main voice acting, usually in at least one or two languages. So for this game, it would be Japanese and English. And then after that voice acting is done, after the scripting's done, after the video game's fully playable and almost bug free, then they finally go around and start translating the dub into other languages. So the translations might already be done, but the actual voice acting in the game, they wanna have localized languages for it. So they do, you know, it's probably Spanish and French and German. I'm not sure how many different languages they did for Breath of the Wild, but the idea obviously is before you do a big blowout trailer, that when you have that trailer ready to go, you want all the various dubs done. That way, all the trailers can be localized in whatever language it needs to be. And thus, it ends up increasing the spread and excitement for the game. So basically what this means is, Tears of the Kingdom's done. Uh, it just in terms of, they're not really developing much more. And there's probably a little bit of polish going into it, but it's essentially gone gold. It hasn't officially done it. And Nintendo rarely tells us when a game goes gold. But yeah, it's, it's basically gone gold. They're working on the final touches. The dubs are being done. And honestly, What's really interesting about Tears of the Kingdom is that the expectation levels for this game should be quite high. I know there's some of you that are a bit tepid right now because we haven't seen a lot of the game and maybe not enough to excite you, but there are certain things happening with this game that should excite you. Let me give you one factoid most people don't realize. Breath of the Wild itself has essentially sold 30 million copies between Wii U and Switch. It's almost sold 30 million just on Switch alone, and while some of those copies have sold for $45, some have sold you know, as low, I think, as $40 or $30, Basically, it's assured the game has eclipsed a billion dollars in revenue. Nintendo has never actually had an in-house built game do that. Okay, that's actually not true. <laughs> We've seen plenty of games do that in the past, but not for Zelda. And what's interesting is that sets up Nintendo to invest heavily in this sequel because they just saw what happened when they spent a lot of money in the first place. This was actually one of Nintendo's most expensive games ever made when it came to Breath of the Wild, and they reaped massive benefits of that. Again, over a billion dollars in revenue. So I look at this and I go, well, that should mean that Tears of the Kingdom has an even bigger budget than Breath of the Wild did, a bigger team than Breath of the Wild did. And this is also supported by the fact it's been in development longer, not just than Breath of the Wild, than any Zelda game in history. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even kidding. You can go and count the days yourself if you want. The bottom line is Tears of the Kingdom has been in development longer than any Zelda game Ever. Now, maybe it's due to COVID and the pandemic that could have added a year or two on. Either way, it's been in development longer than any other Zelda game. It likely had a bigger budget than any other Zelda game. And it's coming off, obviously, one of the, well, the biggest success in franchise history in terms of sales. So, look, while we don't know a lot, we haven't seen much. What is interesting is that this is a game that Nintendo does have a lot of voice acting in, and because of that, maybe the reason they haven't shown so much is when they really blow it out, they wanna have the voice acting, 
and they gotta wait for all the dubs just to make sure that it shows best in each given country. It's kind of probably lame. I, I know it's lame for me, like when you get Japanese voice acting with subtitles when you know it's a game that has English voice acting, because it just means the English voice acting isn't done. So I can imagine that might be annoying in Germany or France or other countries as well. So I do think that this might have been what they were waiting for before the blowout begins, which, if I'm being honest, it probably begins in February. Uh, the reasoning for that is mostly I think they want to be clear of Fire Emblem Engage. As we saw, they were even advertising Fire Emblem Engage at the Game Awards, so I think there is a lot of, hey, let's, let's get this big game out, and then we can sort of shift our marketing focus over to Zelda, uh, starting with their Nintendo Direct in February. So, hey guys, look, this is just a small bit of news, obviously building up a little bit of hype for the game as well, just noting a few facts. Uh, and I want to know your guys' thoughts on all of this. Are you excited for Tears of the Kingdom yet? Have they not shown enough for you to care? Is it a game, you know, if you didn't play the first one, are you thinking about playing this one? And you know what? Is there any of you out there that's never played a Zelda game? And if you haven't, why not? Why haven't you at least tried it? You know, I'll try to friends, you know, copy or something. I, I'm genuinely curious because for me, Zelda's been a huge part of my life dating back to when I was a little kid. So it's hard to imagine having never played the games. But then again, Zelda's not for everyone because there is no game for everyone. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jans from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.